They have numbed me. I am numb. I'm getting numb. Just, I got stabbed six times. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, or welcome if you're new. My name is Steph, and I make videos all about the film, acting, and entertainment industry. So if that's something that interests you, then consider subscribing. Today's video is, as promised, another episode in our How to Make Your Own Movie series, and today we are focusing all on the pre-production process. So we're just gonna do an overview of everything that goes into pre-production, and then in our videos moving forward, we're going to really dive deep on every single area that we go over today, just like our main video. We're really gonna keep going deeper and deeper and deeper, on every single aspect of this process so that you know exactly what to do step by step. That's the most important thing here is to not leave any stone unturned. So if you're excited to learn all about the pre-production process, then stay tuned. Ready? Let's do this. Pre-production is such an important step in the overall filmmaking process. So much hinges on this step. If you don't stay organized from the very start, you're really just dooming your entire production, no matter how big or small your production is. Even if it's just you, you still have to do pre-production. Once you've completed the development stage and your script has been written and rewritten and approved and it's ready to be filmed, it's time to move on to pre-production and the very first step in that process is budgeting. So this part is only if you are producing this on a bigger scale where you're looking for investors. This is not for somebody who is just shooting a movie at home by themselves. But if you are looking for investors, you should consider creating a strong business plan for your film. In that business plan, include your plans for the movie. Are you going to be trying to sell the movie, trying to distribute the film, or are you just entering into festivals? Why are you creating the film? There needs to be a strong reasoning, there needs to be a strong plan, otherwise the investors have no reason to invest. Additionally, if you are going that route, if you're at that level, you should consider, if you haven't already, creating a production company. And when I say that, I actually mean forming a company and opening a bank account and making it legit, putting it on the books. Again, this is really only necessary if you're at the level where you are hiring crew, you need to pay people, and not necessarily if it's just you and your friends or you and a few actors doing a passion project or building your resumes. There are different levels in filmmaking, so keep that in mind and know what level you're at. You really want to think about every single aspect of your movie. Think about your costumes, your props, your wardrobe. Think about the post-production costs. Think about literally anything that you would end up having to spend money on for your movie and include that in your budget. You need to list everything out. Try to use an Excel spreadsheet. That's probably the easiest way. But create a really strong budget and include everything you possibly can. And if you were writing to your means, like we talked about in the last video, and you were, you know, really being careful about how you were writing writing your screenplay, your budget shouldn't be that big. Hopefully if you do things right, it's a pretty small budget. And uh, traditionally in filmmaking, you know, you want to level up. You want to you wanna make your one minute movie, then your five minute, then your 30 minute, then your feature. And you want to keep going bigger and bigger and your budget would grow with that. So again, that goes back to thinking of what level you're at. Where are you at in your filmmaking journey? Just make sure to try to, especially if you are doing this all on your own with just you know crew, try to keep things as small as humanly possible. Okay, so moving on to one of the most tedious, I don't want to say difficult because it's really not difficult, but definitely one of the most tedious portions of not just the pre-production process, but the filmmaking process in general, and that is scheduling. <laughs> it's breaking down your script and it's scheduling, and it's just because it's there's just so much that goes into it, and uh, there is going to be an entire video that is just dedicated to scheduling obviously videos for all of these points, but specifically scheduling, and I'm not sure I might even be doing two videos on scheduling, just because there's so much that goes into it, and breaking down the script alone deserves its own video. So just a very, very quick overview when it comes to scheduling. You basically want to break your script down into categories. So you break it down by the actors, the stunts, the extras, the props, the wardrobe, the special effects, the makeup, the you know, everything that goes into the filmmaking process. And this is going to help you 
inform your budget as well. So honestly, the steps budgeting and scheduling kind of go hand in hand and you really want to work all of that together at the same time because they're going to inform each other. And so in this process, this is where you're going to come up with your number of shooting days and you're going to figure out your overall shoot schedule. All right, so this next point really comes down to, again, what level you're at. If you are making a movie by yourself at home, no crew, just you, don't worry about this next point. If you're making a movie with friends, don't worry about this next point. But if you're at the level where you are securing locations, you are paying people, or you are renting equipment, especially if you are renting equipment, you're going to need a certificate of liability insurance. You're going to need to purchase insurance for your film. So keep that in mind and make sure that that goes into your budget. So the next step in our process is finding our location. This is a really important step, honestly. And again, if we're writing to our means, these locations are gonna be minimum. We're really not gonna have many. Think about what you have access to. Think about your house, your family's house. Think about your friend's house. Think about creative ways that you can tell your story without having to go above and beyond and spend money in your budget on securing locations and things like that, that you definitely, you don't even wanna mess with that. Try to have your locations completely like locked down, fully ready to go, six to eight weeks ahead of your initial shoot date. You really want to have all of that secure because you really can't afford to be changing your locations late in the game. That's really going to honestly mess with the entire project. Like I said, scheduling, it's so tedious, but it's also so important. Like the schedule is such a delicate, delicate thing that if one thing is imbalanced, it really does just throw off the entire project. So keep that in mind. All right, the next step is auditioning our actors. And I, I, I'll sound like a broken record here, but really just be aware of the level that you're at. If you are just starting out, don't try to hire professional actors because they're going to want to be paid. If an actor is normally paid for their work, they're going to expect to be paid for their work. Don't try to hire an actor that is a paid working actor and then offer them a meal and IMDb credit. That's honestly insulting. So just, you know, be aware of your level, be aware of the level of your project, and just think about that. Look at students, look at people who are building their resumes and other people who are wanting wanting and willing to work on passion projects. And just think about that when you're in the casting process. Also, you want to do some light rehearsals. Now, when it comes to film, it's so different from theater. Like theater, theater has like intense, rigorous, rehearsals and they're very very important everything on stage is so technical and while film is also very technical a lot of those rehearsals are technical rehearsals that happen on set in the moment sometimes when you're an actor you're meeting your scene partner literally on set the day you show up now sometimes that's not the case and sometimes you are able to have weeks of rehearsal it depends on the project if it's something like an action film or a dance film or something that requires intense choreography obviously you're going to meet the cast far in advance and you're going to have lots of training time and that's a little bit different but you know when it comes to things like TV and these fast-moving projects a lot of times you really don't have a lot of rehearsal time but when it comes to your project just think about how much rehearsal time you think you need do you have some type of scene that requires intricate choreography or is it a very static slow-moving film just think about all of the elements of your movie and if you think that it's an extremely dialogue heavy scene that the actors would benefit from having a few rehearsals just implement them. Just It's really a project to project thing and it's the director's discretion. So you decide what you want to do with your film. Once you have your locations and your schedule and your actors, go ahead and start working on your crew. Again, we're trying to do it with just us, right? No crew, just you. But this point is for if that's not the case and you are at a higher level where you do need to hire help, essentially. You can't do it all. I will tell you that. you when, when you're on that scale, at least, you definitely can't do it all. You can on a small scale, but not on a big scale. So at that point, go ahead and just start locking down your crew members or whoever you, you know, want to help. If you need friends who are interested in film and are dedicated and understand how serious this is for you, then yeah, bring them onto the project. But either way, just secure your crew and make sure that their schedules are locked down. All right, so our next point focuses on equipment. So hopefully you have a lot of your own equipment, especially if you're an indie filmmaker. If you are trying to do things on your own, hopefully you have a lot of your own stuff. Now, you can consider renting higher quality equipment to up your production value and kind of up the game, especially if you're looking to take things up a notch and really show people what you can do. So if you're looking to work with a higher level camera or a higher level audio system, then look into rental houses and look into different equipment facilities and see the prices. Obviously look into this early on so that you can work it into the budget, but make sure 
sure that you look into all of that and rent out the equipment or prepare your own equipment or borrow from friends or whatever the case may be. Just make sure that you have all of that equipment set and ready to go. And then right after this, we work on our production design. So that's going to go into building any sets that need to be built or just preparing set dressings. If we are filming in a house, just making sure that things like the current family, if they have family photos on the wall, don't have those in the background. You know what I mean? Think about things like that. Create a scene where the character is taking ownership of that space. It needs to feel real. So think about little details like that. This is also a good time to plan out your hair, your makeup, your wardrobe, your props. Go to thrift stores like I talked about in the one video. Think about getting clothes and getting objects and props and anything that you might need on a very, very cheap, cheap level from thrift stores or from secondhand stores. And then the last step in pre-production is honestly to just prepare for post-production. So what you want to do here is if you are not an editor, if you are not the one that's going to be editing your movie, this is the time to get all of that set up. You don't want to get through the entire filming of your movie and then at the end you're like, well, now what? What do I do? I don't know how to edit. <laughs> so no, you want to get all of that set up in advance. So hopefully you have a friend or you know someone that knows how to do it that can either show you or that can do it for you. Or we're going to hire someone. Somebody. We're gonna research and we're gonna look for somebody that either wants to work on your passion project or you work that cost again into the budget. So think about that when it comes to editing, think about that when it comes to special effects, and think about that when it comes to your writing. Again, we're writing to our means, so try as hard as you can to write things that are possible for you to pull off. Don't write things that you may or may not be able to do. Don't write things that are incredible risks, especially not for your first few films. You really want to not play it safe, but not go too crazy in the other direction. Here are some tips and tricks to remember and keep in mind during your pre-production process. The quality of your production is directly proportional to the amount of time you spend on pre-production. So if you barely spend any time on it at all, that's not really going to set yourself up for much success when it comes to shooting your movie. Things aren't going to move smoothly and it's going to take exponentially longer than it would if you had stayed organized and stayed on task. So again, pre-production, it's not complicated, but it really, it's a thousand little tasks. It's so many small, tiny jobs, and it can become overwhelming if you don't keep things organized and you don't do things like keep a pre-production binder. This is something that I'm, I'm so passionate about when it comes to filming my movies, whether it's one binder alone or it's a series of binders, one for each phase, development, pre-production, production, and post. Having a binder where you can collect all of your pertinent information is so important. It's going to keep you organized on set. It's going to keep you organized in the editing room. There's just so many benefits to keeping binders. Something that's so prevalent on a film set, and not just one that you're shooting yourself, but any film set, is going to be Murphy's Law. Whatever can go wrong will go wrong. Expect delays. Expect problems to arise. No matter what you do, even if you have the most planned out, perfect pre-production process, it doesn't matter. Something's still going to go wrong on your set. I promise. So the most important thing you can do here is just prepare for those problems to arise and, and just know how to handle them when they pop up. Don't over react. Don't freak out. It's not the end of the world. If something happens on your film set, roll with it. Use it. Fix it. Do whatever you need to do, but move on from it and keep things moving. The show must go on. Another easily forgotten detail is release forms. So if you're involving anyone else at all, obviously if it's just you and you're the only actor, you're the only person behind the camera, there's no one else involved, you don't need to create a release form for yourself. That's a little bit different. But if anyone else is involved on your project, you have to create a release form and it's for protection on both ends. It's not necessarily something that's reserved for these big Hollywood studios. You need to protect yourself on any scale, on any level. So the first thing you want to do is have your cast and crew sign liability forms. This is going to release you from any fault if there's injury on set. You also want to have them sign deal memos, image releases, and just keep everything on the up and up and make sure that you have permission legally to use their image. Because if you do end up wanting to use this footage, for festivals or for anything else later on, you need to have people's permission. You can't just use their image blindly. This also goes for when you're shooting publicly. Obviously, if you're shooting in a public
public location, you should always get permission from the owner. Then you draft up some type of deal memo where you have an agreement with the owner and they sign, you sign, and everything again is on the up and up. But additionally, you want to then hang signs in that location. If it's a business where you'll be shooting during business hours, during operating hours, you do need to hang signs at the business, maybe towards the front where the public can see before they enter, that is honest with everybody and says, hey, we're shooting something here, you may appear on film, please be aware of that. And that releases you from liability, that releases the image of these strangers. So once they read that and they choose to enter the premises, you can use their likeness, you can use their image for your project, just because them entering the building is basically a release form that they're signing, essentially. Thank you so much for watching today's video. I hope you learned something new all about the pre-production process, and I hope it opened your eyes to how truly important this stage is in the overall filmmaking process. Also, quick note, if you are a fan of spooky season, October is approaching. I'm going back to my two videos a week, so that's gonna be double the content, and half this content coming up in October, especially a lot of it pushed towards the end of the month, is really gonna be focused on the horror genre, on scary movies, on how to make things like fake blood, fake fingers, a body double for a film. So we're really going to expand uh, in a lot of areas that I'm really excited about. So stay tuned for that. We're also going to have some guests and some new segments coming up. So just make sure you're subscribed if you are interested in any of that and like this video if you liked it. I hope you have a great day or night wherever you are in the world and I will see you in the next one. All right. Bye guys. They have numbed me. Bye.